guys welcome in the last lecture we discussed about setup time violation so what should we consider basically while calculating setup time the distance between two clock edges right and we have discussed almost everything about it so if you missed that video please go back and watch that so in this lecture and these are the clocks going to two flip flops ideally both the clocks are same but when i introduce some skew they may change so to maintain clarity i have renamed them now what is setup time setup time is the minimum time before the clock edge for which the input should be stable like at this clock edge the second clock is clocking the data so the d2 should be stable for a minimum time of tsu so this is the definition of setup time and what is full time the minimum time for which the input should be stable after the clock edge so for the whole duration of tsu plus t hold this input d2 should not change is that clear this input d2 should not change the same thing applies for the input anyway this is not in our hands so let's discuss about d2 now so after the clock edge why will d2 change why because at the same instant we are getting a positive edge for the flip flop one also flip flop one is also clocking the data so this data will come here of course after clock to q delay and combination circuit delay and it changes the d2 d2 will be equal to input both are happening at the same time that's the reason the d2 may change now let's see the timing waveforms for now i'm assuming this as full time th so at this clock edge clock 2 is clocking the data i mean absorbing the data so d2 should be stable for a minimum time of th but at the same time clock 1 is also taking the data so this is the input for the clock 1 there will be clock 2 q delay and there will be combination circuit delay so from here there will be combination of circuit delay here we will be getting the input d2 if you observe here from this point to this point the delay is greater than whole time so there is no violation why because during this whole time the input d2 will remain stable it won't change so what is the condition our whole time should be less than the delay then there will be no whole time violation so th should be less than delay and what are these delays from here if you observe clock to q delay and combination circuit delay this is clock to q delay this is combination circuit delay so i'm writing here t t clock to q delay 
this the combination of circuit will be left so this is the equation for whole time now in some cases combination of circuit delay maximum and minimum will be mentioned so what should we do we should take the worst case condition let us say delay is maximum so from here clock to q delay and combination of circuit delay so delay is maximum the amount of time taken by the d2 to, to change is also maximum right then there are less chances of whole time violation so this is clock to q delay this is the original delay if delay is maximum this will continue till here so there are less chances of whole time violation that is not the worst case condition the delay is minimum clock to q delay and this a may change here itself now there are chances of whole time violation because this a is changing little bit early so worst case condition is delay minimum let me add this thing here combination circuit delay minimum which is also called as contamination delay so till now it is clear right well and good now let me make a small change in the circuit i will add skew here in the clock path you know right this is called as clock path this is called as data path so what will happen if i add skew so this clock to will be shifted by an amount delta like this this is delta now let's revisit our equations at this clock edge we are getting the input and there will be clock to q delay and there will be combination circuit delay so this is the whole delay but if you observe from this clock edge we are not calculating the entire delay we are calculating only the entire delay minus delta we only need this right from this clock edge because only that thing holds for the violation so clock to q delay plus combination circuit delay minus this delta right minus delta so in some cases delta max is mentioned and delta min is also mentioned so which value you should take you should always check for the worst case condition so if delta is maximum that means this clock to is shifted a lot so if delta is maximum it may happen that even before the clock edge the input d2 may change right so that will be the worst case condition now what i will do is instead of here i will apply skew in the data part this here now 
instead of clock 2 clock 1 will be shifted this will be delta right okay and this is also delta This clock in the input data, clock to queue delay, and combination circuit delay. But if you observe here, there is one more delay here, which is delta. So in this case, we should add delta to the whole time equation. Why? Because the total delay from this clock edge is also including delta here. Delta plus clock to queue delay plus combination circuit delay right so in this case it is delta so let us say here delta max and delta min are mentioned so which value should we take if delta is maximum the clock edge will occur here but when compared to clock 2 there is a maximum distance when delta is maximum so there are very less chances that the input d2 may change that's the reason this is not the worst case condition worst case condition is delta minimum so in this case we should take delta minimum now what if delay is introduced in both the clocks? Let this be delta 1 and let this be delta 2. And for both the things, maximum and minimum are mentioned. Now, what we should take? And for clock path, we should take minus delta maximum, right? these things we discussed so this is plus delta 1 minimum minus delta 2 maximum so this is the final equation for whole time any circuit that is not following this equation it is violating the whole time and that is called as whole time violation so we can fix that by many ways so if you observe this equation, we can increase combination circuit delay or we can increase delta 1 or we can decrease delta 2. Yeah guys, that's it for today. If you have any doubts, please mention in the comment section. In the next lecture, we'll solve some problems based on the setup time, call time and these violations. And I will also add this flip flop and latch so in the first case there will be flip flop in the second case there will be latch so in these conditions how to write the equation how to solve the problems these things i will try to add yeah that's it have a good day bye bye